Great. Uh, so thank you for the introduction. Uh, today I'd like to talk about NoSQL. It's a topic that's been pretty hot recently. And uh, yeah, just wanted to introduce everybody here to the concept if you haven't heard about it and give you some tools to use if you have and you'd like to dive into it. First, where does the term come from? Well, it was first introduced in 1998 to describe non-relational databases. <coughs> so apart from things like MySQL, Postgres, etc. And then they came back in 2009 because of a wave of new database solutions. Now, why did these databases come about? Why are people moving away from relational databases? And it all has to do with some of the features that these NoSQL solutions are promising. First, of course, is performance with large data sets. We're looking at Google, we're looking at Amazon, uh, Facebook, Flickr. They have large data requirements that are simply not met by relational databases like SQL. Second, of course, is distribution over multiple machines. It's important that your data be available across the globe. And uh, replication is not a very elegant way necessarily to do it because you might want to write globally. Third is low cost performance. You know, we're all used to Linux being free. Uh, NoSQL often comes with a open source uh, licensing agreement. So your cost is quite low to set it up to get it running. Fourth, of course, is super fun times. You know, no new technology would, uh, would be interesting if it didn't promise some element of fun. And a lot of these solutions are quite enjoyable to use. Now, what are some examples of them? Uh, first off, we have multi-dimensional sorted maps. Uh, Big Table by Google. Cassandra is being used by Facebook and um, somebody else. HBase uh, is an Apache project. And what they do, instead of having like a, an intersection of a key and a column, they do a key space, field group, field, time, value. Missing a knee right there. And so you can play around with this in interesting ways. For instance, if you do version control data, you can see you have multiple values for time. So you can have um, version control <laughs> systems within your database instead of external. They're schemaless, and as I mentioned, used by Google, Big, Facebook. Uh, Big is the one that's using Cassandra now. Next up, we have document oriented databases. These are schemaless JSON objects that are identified by primary keys. Um, and you essentially aggregate the data or limit your result sets using map reduced queries. And you use JavaScript for the querying, uh, at the querying language. Next we have object databases. A lot of you may have heard of ZODB. App Engine by Google uses entities. And it's just a one-to-one -one relationship between a PyCon object and the database. In fact, you don't really get to see the database um, you're simply getting, putting, calling all on an object to get a set of results. And uh, it's easy to use. Next, uh, the last one I'm going to present is the key value store, which is simply a hash table. So you have keys, you have values. Um, a great example of that is Membase and Redis. Uh, they're distributed, they're very performant, <coughs> and they're very easy to set up because all you're dealing with are keys and values. Now, there are a lot of other ones, but I won't go into them. Uh, what if you wanted to try them out? There are two solutions that I've used recently uh, that I enjoy quite a bit. Google's App Engine is a cloud-based development environment. Uh, it's easy to deploy. The models are schemaless, so you can always modify your models, upload them, and your old models will simply not have certain fields. Then it's web-based monitoring. You can get it up and running in seconds. And uh, if you're interested in finding out more about it, I'd be happy to show you how it's done. Next is Membase. And Membase is nice because it's based on the same interface as Memcached. It's used by Zanga for <coughs> their development. And uh, maybe you'd be interested in trying this out because I know you're doing a video game. Um, so Zanga is using this to store user profiles. And you do you interface with it in the same way you do with memcached, so import memcache, connect to it, and you're up and running with a persistent mem memcache uh, storage system. Uh, it's very simple to set up, very simple to use, and it comes with a web-based interface for your cloud. Uh, in conclusion, 
uh, there is a conclusion. Um, you know, they say uh, learn a new programming language once a year. Well, I'd like to propose for everyone to learn a new database system once every two years, just to keep yourself uh, fresh and uh, yeah. <coughs> it's a lot of fun. Thanks.